Good evening, everybody. This is Encounters, the late night spiritual UFO talk show. I'm your host, Commander Elian. It's about 11.33. Not too late, 30 minutes late. Normally on at 11, but we're doing, you know, since it is late night, 11.30 is not too bad. Get everybody in here. Marine, good to have you in here with us. Johnny of the Third Kind, see you. Good evening, brother. Good to have you with us as well. And everybody all over the world, whether you're in the UK, England, or whether you're in Europe, or whether you're in North or Central or South America, in Asia, wherever you are watching the show, welcome to Encounters. This is the number one late night spiritual UFO talk show. Hey, Johnny, good to see you, brother. Marine, these two of my moderators. Kevin, everybody coming in here, wherever you are, Deborah, you're with the commander, Frederica, good to have you with us in Germany. We have viewers all over the place. Hey, Chris, in the good old New Jersey area, welcome, brother. Good to have everybody coming in. And you know you're tuned to a show that's out of this world. It always is. It always will be. Just awake. Ah, oh, good, Frederica. Good to see you again. Psychic medium, Erica, welcome. Cookie, Deborah. So for those that are new to the show, I am known as Commander Elian. I am with the Ashtar Galactic Commander, Ashtar Command. I am a talk show host on Earth. Yes, I am. On a radio station called WESUFM every Sunday morning on NPR Pacific Radio Network for 21 years. I'm also a telepathic communicator. Uh, with the Ashtar Command off planet, when, when pretty much one specific Ashtar Command being, I don't channel, I don't have a crystal ball, I don't have a pendulum, I don't read anything. I don't even go reading mostly any websites or agendas. I uh, come directly here as a star seed off planet, and how I define star seed is uh, we volunteer to come to Earth to experience this existence. And we're also here to bust the matrix. We're here to transform the planet. Hey, Susan Mary, good to see you. Deborah, good to see you. So as you watch the show, you get as you in time watch this show, you'll get to know that the commander is very clear in my consciousness. Um, I'm very clear in my intent and my mission here to bust the matrix. I always like to use the word bust the matrix. What I mean by that is I bust the matrix of human belief systems, the whole planetary system of control. And this talk show is one of the more unique UFO talk shows on the planet because it's not your traditional nuts and bolts talk show. There's loads of those people interviewing former senators and everything. I don't have that. You see, I don't need that. What's that going to do for me? Even I can have a, like a, a senator talking about disclosure. What is that going to do for the planet? Absolutely nothing. Hey, Eddie, good to see you, brother. I'd rather talk to you. Remove viewer. Uh, Michelle, I think it is. I'm desperate trying to find out why I'm so sick and weak and nothing helps. Ah, not sure how I can help you on that one. Uh, the rapture caused the Mandela effect. The rapture. Well, we haven't had a rapture yet. Uh, and I don't speak of rapture in a earth-based religious uh, terminology, but we haven't had a rapture yet. But the galactic rapture is different than what has been termed the religious rapture on Earth-based religions, which I bust the matrix on religions, too. Uh, Patty Mule says, I'm your senator. <laughs> Thank you, Patty. Terry Nolan says, hello, it's Linda. I'm with the Terra watching your show. With Terry watching your show tonight in our backyard watching the sky. Oh, beautiful, Terry. Beautiful. I'm glad you're here with us. Love from Iowa. Good to see you, James. Are you with the Galactic Federation? Uh, let me clarify some things about these different groups. There's really one major group. On Earth, there's so many over the New Age community over the last 20 plus years. All these different channels on it, let's say Facebook, say they're channeling this group and that group and the other group. And my group is this group. There's one overseer of every planetary system of light and that is what you call the Ashtar Galactic Command it's like the intergalactic United Nations of planetary systems of peace that is the Ashtar Galactic Command 
And the good thing is, I know not everybody knows what the Ashtar Galactic Command is or Ashtar Command is, but the good news is, I'm with the Ashtar Command. I've been with it since before there was an internet, before there were websites for other different galactic groups existed. Uh, I came right straight off planet into this existence, like a lot of people here that remember who they are. And me, my uh, background for new people is I've been involved in intergalactic communications before coming to Earth. I'm involved in, in a sense, intergalactic communications using radio, uh, my radio show on Sunday mornings. And I'm involved in the same idea used the concept of Earth-based media, which is what you call TikTok. Okay. Good to, thank you, James, for the question. Darlene, uh, thank you for being here. We are spiritual beings created by God in his image and his likeness. Beautifully said, user 120. And God created life throughout the multiverse. Darlene, thank you for the cap. We appreciate it. Ruby, hello. Uh, Terry Dolan, thank you for sending peace, love, and light. That's the essence of what we should be doing. Remote view. Why don't ETs help people with disease or show how to cure disease? So I'll answer that question. Over the decades before some of you were born and even before probably I was born, I'm certainly sure that certain things occurred with star people that helped other people with diseases. The thing is, there will be eventually a thing called med beds. The med beds, which are on the spaceships, when contact officially comes, when that actually does, well, it's not really an officially, but when the contact comes, there are med beds where people will be able to be healed of many things. Diseases, all kinds of things will be healed. And that's, uh, so it's not that the space people don't want to heal people. Right now, the biggest issue is they have to deal with getting rid of all the negative ETs on the planet that caused all the problems for the last 70 years. Not only that, for our current history, once that's all cleared out, then once the planet goes into a transfer from a limited program consciousness and being controlled by people that shouldn't be controlling anything, who have been polluted the you know planet, who have used nuclear bombs before your time, before my time, all these things. Once all that is stopped, then all the beautiful things of helping to heal the planet, including people, will exist. And there have been stories of people throughout history that have been healed by star people in certain situations. So I do understand the question. That time will be coming. That time will, I don't know when that's going to happen. I'm not privy to that knowledge, but it will be coming. So what people on earth have to do is take care of the planet. And when we do that, then the other things will also occur at some point. Hey, Kit Kat, good to see you, sister. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the 13th. Kit Kat, I sent you, uh, you know, just definitely good to see you. Hello, my Wi-Fi is off and on. Hey, K-Smith. Let's see here. Good evening, Rita. Hey, Jan R., good to see you. Let's see here. Well, I'm just looking at people. Love your shirt. Oh, thank you. This is my latest shirt right here. It looks like the sun in the center, and it's a handmade shirt that I was given as a gift. Uh, let's see, remote. If Alpha Centauri is a, is that no? But Alpha Centauri, Alpha Centauri is not a threat. There's no threat from Alpha Centauri. Uh, I think you should look at the people that have been crawling the planet Earth. They've been a threat to our planet for over seventy years. Instead of looking out there, look within here. Look around you. Look at uh, people that have been secretly trying to hide the truth about the existence of the star people. Hey, oh, please, thank you for the heart puff. Now, the only threat there is, is those that have been controlling everything on this planet over the population of Earth. They've been the threat for years, but people have been not realizing who the threat is. And in essence, really, their time is up. They're not a threat. They're basically on their way out. They don't know it yet, but they're on their way out. Uh, so last night's show, if you missed any of my shows, people that are new here, all my shows are on my YouTube channel, Astro Command Spaceship News. I'll say it again, Astro Command Spaceship News. All the shows, all my interviews with people are on that, on that YouTube channel, Astro Command Spaceship News. 
Uh, so you can watch all the previous shows there. Kikat says, I can't wait for the 13th. I can't wait either. Love for peace. Good to see you. Hello. Blessings to you. Uh, I, if you if you donated on the Cash App Vemo, I think I got it. Was it the Vemo? Uh, if you use Vemo, that's the only Cash App I use is Vemo. So I would have gotten it. It's on Vemo. I, if you did that, thank you. I'll have to check. And I've been lax about looking at my Cash App. Vemo is my Cash App on my on here. So if you did, I have to take a look. Hey, Miss Lisa, approved. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Let's see. Hello, Bola. Good to see you. Are you okay, Commander? Are you kidding me? I'm doing great. Actually, um, I've got my crystal. This crystal and the light colors are reflected. It's really cool. I love turning that thing on. It makes the crystal change colors. <laughs> uh, let's see. Love for Peace says, they've been using media and music to control us. Um... Well, music could be a liberating thing. I don't know what music they can use to control us. I mean, there's certain music that's distorted, but there's music that has vibrational patterns of higher frequency that, that are not used for to control anybody. But there is certain types of music that would distort frequency. It sure looks like a sacred chakra. Very cool. Thank you. Let me, let me see if I can show it to everybody. There you go. That's my sheet. That's my new shirt right there. I've had that for a little bit. Had that shirt. Thank you for the compliments on the shirt, Alicia. Uh, you know what, Lacey? Uh, why the government hides the truth? Because they think they can. And frankly, you know the tr You know, I'm going to say something that's going to surprise people. Who cares? Don't don't wait for the government to, to give you any truth. The truth lies within us. Doesn't, you know, government might not be holding to any world government to tell us the truth about our star, our star family, the space people, the UFOs that people are saying, you know, the many non-terrestrial spaceships don't depend on waiting for the government because you'll be waiting for 10,000 years. And by that point, it won't matter anyway. Yeah, the government, the government is worthless when it comes to telling the people the truth regarding this whole subject. No. You want some cosmic truth? We got it right here. People know that. You come here on social media, you come to this show, you're going to get some cosmic truth. I guarantee it. Jesus come coming back to, but nobody can tell you when. Uh, it says, uh, on CON after another form from human beings. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, let's see. Hey, family, Ashley, good to see you. Uh, you're welcome, uh, friends. Let's see. Uh, Allison, let's see. Allison, why do we do you need donations if you're connected to the Stark Man? Because as a human being, I'll answer your question. Because I can. <laughs> because I'm absolutely okay with it. Because that's my individual right. If I decide on TikTok to want to get donations to my TikTok, I can ask for it. Now, if TikTok told people all over the content world, Nobody can do donations for anybody. Fine, I'm with it too. But as long as they're doing it, I will do it. I'm very out there. I'm very, very uh, direct about that. I mean, you're on TikTok. If you create contact content and somebody wants to donate something to you, like a hat or something or TikTok coins uh, to give you a gift, if you, you, if you want to tell people not to donate to you, Allison, uh, you can do that. Me, I'm going to be right out there. And man, I will take all the gifts people give me. Because I think I deserve it. That's why. Hopefully that answers your question. I'm not sure if you're relatively new to TikTok or not, but you, oh, you only have 39 followers, so you're relatively new. So as you get used to TikTok, Allison, you'll find that a lot of people with different kinds of live broadcasts you know, get gifts on TikTok. And there are many of them that get it for being funny. Some of them do it uh, who are singers, songwriters on here. You're going to find there's a lot of and in terms of being a star command person, I am living on Earth. I'm not living on Mars right now. So, uh, you know, since I'm living here, I'm experiencing all the aspects of Earth, including getting gifts on TikTok. 
and I find it absolutely no problem. You know, when you do your live and you get up to a thousand people and you don't want to take any gifts from anybody, more power to you, man. You know, hey, whatever you want to do, you do. Uh, let's see here. Hey, be right back. Hey, Johnny, no problem, man. Let's see. Sandman, hi, good to see you. Allison Boyd says they use 440 as a standard tuning for music. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Hey, Brim. Uh, hello, hey, Paranormal Ghostbuster. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm glad we uh, talked to you. Nikki D. Good to see you, Nikki D. Nikki D, I, um, I sent you some information how to get to the, to the gathering on Saturday. Uh, and uh, it should be easy to get to as you get close to it. The dark night. I am a contact. I'm a, I'm a contactor. I'm happy to greet you. Let's see. This is interesting. I am a contactor. Are you are you saying you're a contact D? The dark night. I am a contactor. That doesn't make much. I think you're saying you're a contact D. Don't threat anybody except yourself. All governments bad. The start people are not an ATM. That's right. <laughs> We're not ATMs. Well said, Alicia. Everyone on TikTok can. That's right. Because it furthers the goal of spreading your message. Yes. Love for peace. Thank you. Just got the... Okay, let's see here. I'm just looking at people's things here. It's a virtual... Tip jar, yeah, it's like giving somebody a tip, you know. You go to a restaurant, you give the waiter or waitress a tip. I always do. Uh, let's see here. Can someone explain the process of the agency of of an agency on joining? Grim, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> Everyone deserves to be paid for their time and work. Yes, Lil, you're absolutely correct. Just curious, are you a Democrat? I mean, no harm. Nope. I'm not um, at all anything. I don't believe in any earth-based political parties. I don't even believe in it because once I subject myself to that belief system, then I'm subjecting myself to a 3D system that I don't believe in on any, any country, anywhere on the earth. I think every political party on earth needs to be dissolved. Every religious institution needs to be dissolved. Uh, and every, uh, all the uh, militaries of the world, armies, nuclear weapons, everything on earth needs to be dissolved. The only thing that should be happening now is that people learn to be not codependent on people in power. That's been the problem on this planet. Codependency on people that think they're going to be your savior, whether they're in China, whether they're in a little country in the Middle East or something, that's just playing into the 3D world. I'm here to bust the matrix. They come from Mars. I work with the Ashtar Command, and there are no political parties in space. Only on Earth have people separated themselves from the core essence of who they are. I'm here to come here to tear that all up and bust it all up. It'll be the best thing you've ever seen. When all that stuff's busted up, and people live in unconditional love, and I mean unconditional love, as we do in other planets, when the people on earth in the human form learn to live in unconditional love, then it'll be a beautiful world. It's going to take a little bit of you know work because the mind gets control of people. But uh, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't subscribe to religion, uh, political parties on earth or any of that stuff. I'm a clear conscious uh, person that works directly off planet with my brothers and sisters. Tony, no harm done. That was a good question. Yeah, Patty Meals, Earth is pretty cool, and we need to take care of this planet. Hey, Stargazer. This is a cool planet. Uh, will you ever have a gathering in Texas or Oklahoma? Um, not sure. I can only live in the now moment, and in the now moment, uh, this is where I am, in New England. So, But these things will occur where you are. You know, you can make it happen, too, love for peace. You know, you can coordinate in where you are in Texas and Oklahoma, or if you live in Texas or Oklahoma, wherever you live, you can create these places where people can come together where you are. So it's up to people to create things all over the planet, you know. Hey, Todd Boone, thank you for the roses. My goal is to get everybody to be active. 
on this show, my goal is not only interviewing people about their uh, visitations, UFO sightings and all that, but I want people to be able to activate themselves where they are. I want to teach people to say, get a group together, a, free, a few people, you know, that are ready and start doing the things you need to do to have people gather. Uh, yes, I just read it. Thank, oh, you're well, welcome, Nikki D. We're looking forward to seeing you. Karen82, good to see you. Evening, everyone. Hope you're all having a good night. Looking forward to a great show tonight. Yep, good to have you with us. Let's see here. Hey, Gramps, good to see you. Um, I like to acknowledge everybody. The Dark Knight, no, my brother. I initiate contact with earthbound subjects. Well, you're on Earth yourself, so you're an earthbound subject on TikTok. You're you're an earthbound subject just like I am, so, you know. So, uh, being that I work with the Astro Command, you know, you are probably using as an earthbound person yourself. You're also earthbound. You also are human. I read your energy. You are human. So, you know, nice to meet you. Now, if you're a star seed or a contactee, you probably have contact with your star people or the people that you're connected with off planet, uh, their dark night. Uh, I gather that's what it is. So there's no earthbound subjects. <laughs> um, let's see here. People have many different beliefs. I tend to take blind, uh, blind remote viewing more seriously and use intuition. Oh, interesting. Oh, intuition, yeah. Saint, welcome to the show, Saint. Let's see here. Hi, hey, Cosmic. Good to see you, Dustin. Good to see you, brother. Cheryl, good to see you. Star Runner, good to see you. Uh, did April go to the doctors today? Did she find out anything? I'm not sure. If she comes on here, uh, or if I talk to her, Offline, I'll find out. My night skies changed. So I kind of it's kind of overwhelming. Uh, I speak for the trees. Hey, I speak for the trees. Good to see you. Good to see you always. Your stamina and sense of self is very uncanny. My sense of self is very uncanny. Well, you're going to find out a lot of things about the commander that I'm not your typical human being. <laughs> And you're going to see very quickly how we bust the matrix. Continue to spread these words. We will. Of course we will. I work with the Celestial Council. They help Earth also. Brim does do that work. Hey, Prince, good to see you. Are you familiar with the Authorius Society? Yes. George King, who was the head of that society, he was a contactee. I'm very familiar with them. Uh, there's some books that have been written recently. I interviewed one of the younger members uh, about... 15 years ago, and the, the uh, I think it's the Athoris, I can't pronounce their name, they're very much, uh, they have been uh, with contact for years. I did a whole interview with uh, one of the people who wrote a book about 15 years ago on my radio show. I'm a contactee to my counterpart from another intelligent race. Shakti Shanker, this is interesting. Shakti Shanker, would you like to come on the show? I think it's going to be very interesting. I'd like to interview you. Your, your your sentence right there sparked my interest. This is what happens on my show. So Shakti Shankar, uh, if you are available to come on the show, we'd like to have you on the show. Let me see what the... Yes, the, thank you, Mark Fisher. I do have a sense of humor. That's, that's absolutely true. Hey, Cliff, good to see you. Yeah, April went to the doctors. Okay. So Cliff was... Uh, she went to the doctors. Good. Ah, I'm very shy as a person, but yes. Oh, good. So I don't want you to be too shy. I've been working on my book. Oh, good. So Shakti, when I bring you on, and uh, you'll see a little camera. Don't be too shy. I treat everybody with respect here. I'm a contactee uh, since uh, since the 60s. I've told it before that I uh, had contact with beautiful space people uh, in light blue spacesuits uh, on a spaceship that I was watching from the second floor of my house many years ago. Uh, so I'm very much involved with the Ashtar Command. 
I'm also a talk show host on radio for 21 years. I'm sort of like a cosmic book, and I treat everybody beautifully. Uh, Shakti, you have to set your setting. Turn your setting to public. Turn Reset your setting on your TikTok to public right now. You, can, you have over 2758 on there. You have to change your setting. Tell me when you change the setting, and then I can press the button here. Okay, I'm going to bring Shakti on. We're going to have our first interview of the night. I, I pick people out like that. When they give me a sentence, I can tell I got to have that person on the show. Um, okay, take your time. I'll come right back. Yeah, so you have to do what you have to do first, then come back on with the setting readjusted. And tell me once you readjust it, I'll bring you on the show here. We're going to have Shakti on here, and she is a contactee. Uh, we're going to have some great questions for her. I know she's got incredible information to share on the show, so I'm super excited. You know, please share and like. We want to go to 100,000 uh, likes tonight. We're at 11.59, almost midnight. We're going to hopefully get there. Friends with Furry, hey, April, good to see you. Sister, Sen Sang, uh, it definitely, I can't wait to interview Shakti. She'll be right back. We're going to have our first interview, folks. I feel like a little kid when I have a good interview. I feel like this little kid, like, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> You know, we're definitely going to have, hey, darling, thank you for the cap. You know, we appreciate everybody. Uh, when she comes back on, she should have her setting changed. Hey, sister. And fate finder of small things. I look for a city in the sky tonight in the clouds from the storm near Austin, Texas. So fate finder, did you see a city in the clouds out there? I hope you did. Oh, yeah, I did. Uh. I have a, a goal here. April is good at reminding me about that. I've got, uh, I'm pinning my goals here. Actually, I'm going to edit the goal. And I think I want to do the mustache thing. And hopefully we'll have uh, Shakti on this show here. I'm going to set it to um, eight hats with the mustache. I'm going to set it in a minute here. Okay, I've just pinned the goal. Okay, I pinned eight hats, the, the cowboy hat or whatever with the mustache. Thank you, April, for reminding me. Darling, thank you for the hat. You know, I just shaved and now I have a mustache, so that feels pretty good. You're going to find on this show that the commander is a very loving, unconditional space person from uh, out off planet. Hey, Karen, thank you. And I do have a sense of humor. I can't help it. I came to Earth with a smile on my face. Love for peace. Glad to see you. Thank you so much for the hat. We appreciate that very much. And it's true. I came to Earth with a smile on my face because I came from a, another planet where there's nothing but happiness. Right? I should make a I should make a t-shirt that says, a tie-dye shirt that says, I came from another planet with a smile on my face. I like that. I'm not going to forget that now. That would be one of my mottos. I came to Earth with a smile on my face. I did. Now I'm never going to forget I said that. You're going to see that the commander is serious about the mission work. But I also am very much a very loving person. You know, I don't understand anything on Earth where there's conflict, greed, jealousy. That comes from the mind. When people get in their minds, they say, no, I'm not jealous. I'm not really jealous. They are. Doesn't send us enough love. Todd Boone, doesn't send us enough love on the earth. Well, we have to be that love, you know. Each person has to be that love. And if we collectively all act in love, then that love will be all over earth. You know, we don't need to have love sent to earth. We have to be that love, you know. That's why I'm here to bust the matrix. Let's see if Shakti is out there. Shakti hopefully will be back. I want to do an interview here with her. And she's writing a book. I know that. I wish everybody loved everybody. Well, we just have to touch each other in terms of spreading that love. You see, Todd, if we all spread the love, there will be love for sure. I think from another planet, too, because I don't understand any of it. Yeah. Yeah. So you, what you're saying is you're also from another planet. You don't understand the way you interact, you know. I understand that remote. I came from space with a smile on my face. 
Hey, good going, Cliff. I came from space with a smile on my face. I like that. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can get Shakti here. I don't know where she is. I'll see if I can. she's back online yet. I hope she doesn't have problems switching her settings. I'm going to find her going backwards. The commander has a mission to find Shakti. Where is she? Uh, let's see. Ah, we're going to bring her on now. She's tw she's beautiful. Hi. To hey, welcome to the show. We're so happy to have you on here. Thanks. Okay, I get really nervous talking because um, I got bullied for this a lot in my life. So when well, I, start I huh? you won't you won't be bull you won't be bullied here. I have the most popular uh, show on spiritual UFOs on any social media. Uh, I work with the Ashtar Command. I'm a contactee. I'm from Mars. I came out of the closet over over many years ago. So I'm very much open and out of the closet. So this is a show. No one gets bullied on here. I'm very supportive of uh, everybody. And I want you to feel very, very uh, at peace here. We're going to treat you with respect. And we're going to learn a lot about your experiences, too. Okay. Do you feel better already? Not really. I still get scared. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, don't be scared. You know, uh, can you turn your camera on? No one's going to bully you here. There's no bullies here. Everything okay. here is love and light. Do I have to turn my camera on? I just you don't have to. Take off all my makeup off. Oh, oh then no, don't worry about it. You know, next okay. time we have you on, you can you can come on camera. So we're gonna we'll start gradually. I'm just happy you came here. So tell us where you are on the planet and uh, tell us the beginnings of your story because I think by your sense it's fascinating. Okay, so um. I was born in 1985, and by 1987, I got my first, uh, I guess, channeled message. I don't know. Um, and I was so little, and I was like, why is this person, why is this? It wasn't even a thing or being, it was a pattern, light frequency kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't really speaking in words. It was mostly a vibration. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they, they were just giving me messages about future events. So that's how it first started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by the time I was eight, I was contacted by um, a lot of people know this God as or quote unquote God as Shiva from India. And he is the one who has been giving me all of my knowledge, everything that I know. He's taught me everything about anything from my past life. He gave me visions about it. He gives me all of. Hmm. Yeah. The reason why I'm here, the debt that I have to pay because of the things I did in a past well, I don't really call it past because we don't believe in time, but mm -hmm. like another dimensional field version of us, I had to come here to remove that debt that caused a lot of negativity in that like dimensional network that I caused. Hmm. So for you, and I, I, I'm a quick reader and learner from people that I interview, you also came from the stars, but you came here to, you know, as any of us came here from other planets to re-understand the earth experience and to at that point, because we now live that experience as you are, whatever generation you're you're from, we're all here to have the experience good, better, and different. By learning that, uh, we are learning to be what we're supposed to be, which is unconditionally loving star people from other planets, which is where we come from. That is true. Yeah. You know, so I completely understand your beginning of your story. So with that said, I have to, uh, as I'm looking, as I'm reading your picture, I have to also believe you've had contact with space people. Yes, um, for a I know long that. time. Yeah. <laughs> see, this is the one. I see. I read energy. I know you have. So let's start with some of that. Like, when did you have your first contact with star people? I think I was eleven. I was actually sick, and I was in bed. This is weird because mm -hmm. my family left to go watch Titanic, and they left me home by myself <laughs> to be sick mm. while they go to the movies. And, you know, the thing that they call sleep paralysis or whatever, um, that was my first time, like, going through that. And I, was, I wasn't I was even laying down. I was sitting up, and they just pushed me down into my bed. And they were just showing me visions at first. Who pushed you down to your bed, though? I don't even know which, like, I would say star system they came from. Mm -hmm. But it's usually different systems and then just all give me images or symbols to try to hmm. decide for myself mm -hmm. and you know like i've been writing things down for now 36 years wow. so yeah 
Can I you tell know. us, yeah. and as you get into that, tell us a little about, uh, when I hear stories like contact stories like this, visitations like this, can you tell us what some of these uh, space people look like? Did you see them? Can you tell us any descriptions? I'm, I'm sure you must have seen some of them. Um, some of them look like just patterns, like, um, patterns. yes, like patterns, like moving vibrational patterns, like mm. little patterns that are just frequencies of light and they just move mm -hmm. and vibrate. Mm -hmm. Other mm -hmm. ones I have seen, they were very bright blue, about almost 18 to 36 feet tall. Um, other one, huh? Wow. Are you saying that some of the beings you've seen, uh, uh, that you visually seen are 18 to 36 feet tall yes wow yeah okay. so yeah um i've seen ones okay this was the weirdest one <laughs> i thought it was weird because one mm -hmm. looked like what a praying mantis on this earth mother looks like but mm -hmm. they said that they live not in a space realm they live in the oceans of the earth mother here so, so the the so you're saying that they live in the oceans they have they have their civilizations within our oceans on on earth correct yes yeah okay okay interesting continue on and i'm just another, I'm, i yeah, think it's interesting look like um kind of like dolphin people i would say more just like a dolphin mm -hmm. but they have attributes like an actual being like i don't know a human or something because they they speak they they're very intelligent yeah yeah so you're talking about so you know that the dolphins before they were dolphin well there's a whole galactic history about dolphins on earth that dolphins at one point were in humanoid fashion and, and changed their shape or something happened that they volunteered to do this changeover in our oceans and uh, that's why the, the dolphins are extremely intelligent yes and, and go into that a bit about the dolphins can you tell us about that whole thing um, no, like, okay, so <laughs> I, I don't like when I tell my story, because I'm usually telling it to myself to try to tell it to people. It's usually like a funny okay. question trying to like, okay, how we okay. used to talk back then or something. Yeah. So I remember a vision they gave me a while ago. Um, and it was a bunch, it was about five different races. And they were mm -hmm. like, this is how we all came here together. And we met and we were trying to make beings. Right. And I remember this is when the dolphin people came to me they came from the serious b system or a yes yes and i was like well i come from this place so i want to borrow you and can we make beings together so hmm. that was basically how i met them they we were just mm -hmm. exchanging a memory and them showing me like my importance with them and their importance with me hmm. and how we were linked together in like a soul's high mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they were they were they communicating with you, the dolphin uh, uh, beings uh, telepathically, mind to mind, conscious communications. How were they communicating yes, with you? It's through uh, telepathic communication. Um, that's yes, how that's they all would be. talk to me. Yeah, I don't know if right. you know anything about personality types um, with the Myers Briggs. Mm. I'm INFJ, which usually just goes by like unconscious and by intuition. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's. That's all. That's how they speak to me. They don't really Very speak to words unless it's like Shiva. Um, he mm -hmm. will actually go into my body, and I will speak like in his voice, but like kind of more. So feminine. let me ask you a question. So you know, and one of the things I I I, I try to teach people is um, that no one should go into anybody's body. But in this case, can you explain why that is you know, with the Shiva? Because uh, that, that that comes from the um, the Shiva comes from the uh, from India. Am I correct about that in terms yes. of the tradition? Okay, yes. so people don't realize that. So if you're from India, you might have a greater understanding of Shiva than yes. someone maybe in a Western culture. Yeah, uh, see, how from the Western culture, and for Shiva to come to me, a right. lot of people from India was like, "Oh my gosh, he really came to you?" And I was like, "Yeah, he showed me my past life, our connection." Mm -hmm. Shiva comes to my consciousness, and I believe that he is able to take over. I wouldn't say my physical body because he's just in my consciousness, but it feels so conscious to me. Right. Yeah, okay. but it gets. So it's not like it's, it's not like the Shiva is taking over your body because that would be something I would be totally opposed to of any being doing. Yeah, no, it's um, just for me. I, yeah. I 
I kind of acted out with him, you know, but right. when I talk to him, I'm like, how are you doing this? And he tells me because we are one, you know, like him and I, we are one mm -hmm. consciousness. Mm -hmm. We are one heartbeat. We are one breath. You and I, that's why I said, right. you know, okay. Yeah. So you have, so you have the Shiva, then you have all the intergalactic stuff going on with yourself on a physical level. So, um, you, you, you've had, it seems like you are able to, you have activated conscious communications and physical interactions with different intergalactic beings. Am I correct? Yes. Even, uh, Marduk you, you from Nibiru. All right. Nibiru, they call, okay. Somebody they call you want to explain Anunnaki. So you have connections also with the Anunnaki? Yes. They came in You're in like, 2010. Okay, so when the you met the Anunnaki, and, I want, and this is Encounters, the Spiritual UFO Talk Show, where you won't hear anything like this on other things on YouTube or anywhere on, on, in, on TikTok in terms of the in types of interviews we do here. And I am a talk show host for 21 years on uh, NPR radio. So so tell us about the Anunnaki. I mean, uh, there are people I've, I've met who said they've had interactions physically with the Anunnaki, which is one of many different intergalactic uh, beings from space, they're not the only ones, nor, and nor are they the sole ones. But wh what was your interaction with the Anunnaki? Can you tell us what that was like and how that occurred? Um, okay, so it happened, I lied about 2010. I was 2014 because I remember I had just like got found from being kidnapped. So I was kidnapped in 2014 oh. and when I was found, I didn't want to be into my spiritual work. I didn't want to be with consciousness. I wanted to be untied hmm. to it, right? Because I right. felt like it was the reason why I was getting bullied a lot, beat up a lot. I've had a backpack oh full of metal to my face. I've had a lot oh of my stuff burned. Yeah, a lot of people tried to like basically end my life because I've been telling the future since I was two. And the, I, I was at my limit. Hmm. I was like, I'm, I was kidnapped and this guy almost unalived me. I don't want to do this no more. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Marduk came in and he kept saying his name and I said, I, I don't care. This sounds funny now today. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my gosh, there's a demon in my head. And I kept saying it out loud, like, who is this Marduk guy? And somebody's coming and like, cause I had cut it all out of my life. Like I'm done. Nobody's right. talking to me. And then he was like, I am Marduk, you know, I am from the Anunnaki and this and that. He said, I just want to let you know that we are coming back. So then we started communicating about that, like when they were coming and how they are returning back here to awaken more people because the laws here that were like contracted with the leaders of our mm -hmm. world have been mm -hmm. broken because they didn't keep up to par with it to teach the mankind mm -hmm. about their ancient families. Mm hmm. So the Marduk, uh, was this a telepathic uh, conscious to conscious? Because I'm a telepathic communicator with the Ashtar Command directly. I don't channel anything. Was this Marduk communicating with you like a mind to mind, like we're talking verbally here, mind to mind contact with you? Yes. Okay. Okay. Just to let people know. So when you spoke to Marduk, again, what year was this that you had this telepathic communication? Uh, 2014, and it, it's still going on today. It, it is. It and yeah. So you know that Marduk and the Anunnaki are one of many intergalactic civilizations. They're not the only ones that are coming back. There's many different uh, groups under the umbrella of the Ashtar Galactic Command, which I represent, which are the Christed beings of light. Uh, yes. But tell us about the Anunnaki. When did they say they're coming back? Did they tell you um, that? They're in return in orbit right now. So in 2017, or when the last quote-unquote eclipse happened, I don't call it an eclipse because I know that wasn't mm -hmm. moving over the sun. Right. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I was so upset because... They told me, well, th this channel message, because like my prophecies all have came true. It just takes kind of like time to unfold. And they were like, we were coming right now during this. And they put quote unquote eclipse. So I sat outside the whole summer of 2017, like, okay, where are you at? And I was literally in tears because I was like, where? I thought you were coming. And they're like, don't worry, we're returning. We're gonna like basically enforce the light laws back. You know, like the unconditional love, forgiving, the acceptance, brotherhood, mm -hmm. all of that. So mm -hmm. um, I was like, well, you're not here. And I'm crying again because <laughs> I have no friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like, you know, I kind of stopped talking to them. Then they came back. It's they're supposed to be here like from now until next year. Like that's the time frame. 
Okay, so let's stop with that right there for a minute. So for my audience, she's, uh, you're saying the com telepathic communications you're getting with the Anunnaki, this Marduk space person, is saying to you, not channel, but in mind-to-mind -mind communications, that they're coming back between this year and next. Yeah, just so like that's it. and the like quote unquote Hindu gods, they're coming back mm -hmm. this year to next year. Right. Well, yeah, and I know from the Indian culture there are many gods, but from the 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 uh, the off planet understanding, there's really only one god that represents all the different planetary systems and yes. all the universes and galaxies, and you know that already. But I yes. understand Indian culture, so I do understand. In that culture, there are many gods and so forth that were created by people, just like on Western civilizations, people created churches, temples, and all this stuff to re worship separately. And that's just, just the way Earth is. That's the way people in cultures created things. So they're coming back, which kind of makes sense in terms of contact with our galactic family between now and 2025. Uh, there's been, uh, uh, and I will tell you, that uh, the Ashtar Command uh, and many of the different galactic civilizations are actually, the timeline has been sped up. Have you heard that? The timeline has been sped up. Based on what you're saying with the yeah. Anunnaki, they're yes. telling you their timeline has been sped up and they're yes. coming back to Earth with their galactic fleets. But they're all part of a big, big star family of fleets from many different planetary systems. Oh, yeah. I have a little, uh, it, it was written on a, a sticky note. Well, it was like a bunch of little papers, a bunch of different, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've heard of the Echelon. I don't know who they are yet. Echelon. Yeah, so they have came in. It was different systems telling me they're coming. They're all on the way here. And this was mm -hmm. back um, in August last year. August of last year. So tell yeah. us, tell our viewers about the Echelon. Who are they? I don't know yet. I, I've never heard of them. Know. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out because that was the first time and basically the last time I heard from them. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> who are these people? But they gave me little, I guess, coordinates, like mm -hmm. numbers with letters on like what system they come from. But I honestly mm -hmm. don't know how to use that either. That's so right. I'm, and I don't have any like friends to try to figure it out. So right. I just left it well, in my notes. Well, let me tell you something. You now have uh, over 200 plus friends here. And if you stick with this show, when I'm on here, you're going to have a lot of friends here because on this show, we bust the matrix. Uh, I'm I directly am in contact. Uh, my friend April, who's here with me, she's in Vermont. Um, oh yeah, when I'm talking, when I do hear, people are saying they're hearing a, a voice speaking as I speak. Um, so when you're on my show, let me explain something for people because this happens. My my energy is so amped up on a galactic level now it's been that way for i think weeks that uh, if you're hearing any voices uh you know uh, it's just the am amplification of my energy is coming through and um yeah so uh, uh it's just that things are shifting when i go broadcasting on here this will happen as you're hearing now you'll hear amplification of uh, voice uh, coming through do you hear it i can hear it myself i got my ear pods on Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay. So, yeah. Interesting. Are you hearing anything, uh, Shakti? I can't hear anything because I don't have my, like, headphones in and my daughters are in the background talking. So. Okay. <laughs> so, I've come to the understanding that uh, there are things right now, the amplification of sound on my show is going higher and higher right now. Uh, this will happen at times, and it's going to happen more frequently. Uh, they're definitely, um, uh, the Astro Command is uh, watching my show. They're tuned into my show right now. Uh, so, no, that's not it. Uh, forget that other name, Lexicon. That name does not exist. Put that name out of there. That name is no good. The other name, the second name, throw it out. No longer. No longer, but the uh, Ashtar Command is uh, definitely uh, what we're connected with constantly, and I work with the Christ of Beings of Light. Just to tell you, so the fact that you're here, I want to hear more about your story. But uh, there is a, a very strong light energy. Uh, before I come on my show, I, I ask the Ashtar Command to protect the show, to protect all my viewers, and I do that every time before I come on here. I can hear them so now. That is so weird. <laughs> You can hear the voice. Thing in the world. 
Yeah, that's coming from the Ashtar Command realm. Uh, so my Ashtar Command my father and my mother are on a ship. They're listening to the show. Uh, April's uh, father and uh, mother and everybody's listening to the show. And my actual show is being broadcast throughout the universe. This is going to be kind of understanding right now. That it's being amplified, this program at the moment. I don't know why I'm telling you this. My show is being amplified all throughout the galactic universe. So it's not just on TikTok. Uh, it's happening uh, beyond Earth. People are actually watching on the ships my show. And they can actually see you. They can see me. They can see everybody in the, in the room here at the moment. I'm going to bring April up. Something is definitely happening at the moment. I'm going to bring, I feel something is happening at the moment. So uh, April is going to join us. I, I feel this I'm just really going to sit intense. quietly because I'm on that phone and voices are definitely coming across. So I'm just going to mute my mic and let the voices see what they're going to do. Yeah. And even before April came on, the voices were happening. So uh, the amplification of the show, if you're just coming into my show now, uh, we're having galactic uh, uh, transmission uh, coming from my program going out into space. Um, so for some reason, my consciousness has shifted. Uh, you might have uh, seen it by watching me. My face is shifting. My energy is shifting. Uh, there is direct contact happening with the show right now with the Ashtar Command. I want to turn it back over to Shakti. Um, so this things will happen more in my show as we get near contact. Uh, there's going to be more of this occurring. So I want you to understand that there, uh, this is going to be occurring increasingly on my program. Wow. Uh, Shakti, continue on with your story. Um, it's, a, it's beautiful what you're sharing with us. Uh, please continue. Well, um, yeah, um, I don't know what else to say. Okay. I'm really bad at this because I don't talk to people. I like literally have conversations with myself. <laughs> like I practice on what I'm going to say. That well, weird. that's good. That's, that's good. It's, nothing sounds weird here. This is a place for intergalactic knowledge. My show has become a place for our star people, the, the Ashtar Command. They watch our show. They're watching it right now as I speak. And uh, I just want our listeners and viewers to know, not listeners, but our viewers to know that above anything on YouTube or TikTok, you're going to hear things like this happen on my show because we are connected to our star family here on the show. Absolutely. You know, and I definitely want you to follow us here. Uh, you're a beautiful soul and you are doing some beautiful things. I'm sorry for your experiences you had physically uh, as a person, as a human being. Uh, but you now are amongst friends here, and you're definitely well-loved here. I just want you to know that. I appreciate that. I, I actually appreciate all the negative things that I went through because it led me into understanding how mankind is today, and it led me into wanting to push forth with my purpose and why I came back mm -hmm. here. You mm -hmm. know, because to actually understand what needs to be fixed, is it, we have to kind of go through that experience, and we have to understand the minds of mankind so i'm grateful for well, ho well, ho well hopefully not ho well, hopefully not go through that experience because yeah, you know yeah. no one should no no one should have to go through the experience of being violently i'm not going to say the words just you yeah. know no one should have to go through that you shouldn't have had to gone through that you know you 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 went through it uh i would not want you to ever go through that again commander ever. a yeah. voice just came through and said she should have had no pain oh. Oh, I didn't hear that. They also said that they also said she's a traveler. Do you know that, Shakti, that you're a traveler? Yeah, <laughs> that's actually what my last name means. My real last name is called. Interesting. Oh, my, my real first name is Zell Crystal. It's the only name in the world of seven billion people. Nobody else has my name. Hmm. So I, I don't know. I felt like, my, you know, words are very powerful and I feel like we are named for a reason. So, I don't know. I used to hate my name until I figured out nobody else had it. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm about to cry because of what she just said. <laughs> kind of no, made see, me feel, my, yeah, friend April is, <laughs> my friend April and I, uh, our parents are on a spaceship with the Ashtar Command. Uh, and uh, they're watching the show right now and listening to your story. That makes me feel good, like, in my heart. Because I feel like nobody's mm. ever tried to listen to my story until they want, like, oh, unless they man. want to, go, like, make fun of me. No one's going to make fun of you here, you know. No one here will make fun of you. We, you know, you uh, touched my heart That's and uh, asked for a man. They said, be proud of who you are. They're talking right now. You're an important. 
person, you need to learn your lesson and then come home. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you just said that. That's like most of my channeled messages. It says that. <laughs> love yourself. Know you're special. We love you so you can come home. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that is so, oh my gosh. They're telling you that. I'm not saying a thing. This is them talking to you. Oh, they're yeah. talking. Hold she, on. She, oh. They said, yes, love yourself. And then they said, we love the show. <laughs> yes. Yes. My father is uh, Robar. My mother's Luna. Nakanook is her father and her parents and others are, are, are listening to your story. And I must tell you, we do love you. I represent the Ash Parker Man here on Earth because I'm in this. I came here from the ship. I came here from the ship when I was a baby in the ninth, late 50s. And um he said, I can tell dad. you, it must be, it must be your father. Cause he said my, my father. Dad. Yes. Yes. And I, I, I want you to know that the Ashtar man, my, my, our family off planet, we all love you. And I, I'm sorry. Like I said, I am sorry you went through that experience, but you are a beautiful person and uh, you are with people here that love you. Uh, our Ashtar man family, our parents love you. Um, they're listening to your story and, uh, you know, it's uh, it's an emotional thing. Um, the energy is so amped up in my room here. It's crazy. Um, you're a beautiful person. Thank you so much. And thank you for allowing me to share like part of my story. This means so much to me. You have mm. no idea because I sit alone. Like I am literally always alone and I've been wanting to share my story because mm -hmm. even my my intelligent uh, heritage, my my system, keeps telling me to tell my story they're like they have to know somebody has to know because there are more people out there like you that you guys can share your stories together mm. and i've always felt like okay there's nobody that is like me <laughs> and, it, and i found your live and i was like what is this i need to listen to this it's more important than ever right yes. now that you start sharing your story yes more and more people are believing your story is very important As a matter of fact there's no, there's no, uh, what's the word I'm going to say? Uh, it's no coincidence that you found this, this show. Your inner guidance brought you here, you know, and you are, we want you to not on the same one, stay, say, stay here. We want you to feel comfortable here to be here because this is a place where you'll be protected and you're not going to be alone ever again. When I heard you say you're alone, um, that hit my heart, you know? They you're just said alone. you're never alone. That's what he's saying right now. You're never alone. You are loved. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> it's okay to cry, you know. Allow yourself to cry. It's okay to cry, you know. In truth. It's weird because they're talking underneath your voice, Commander. Yeah, I noticed they were do they've been doing that the whole show. Can you hear them, Shakti, talking to you? Yeah, no, I can't hear what they're saying, but I can kind of hear it. It kind of sounds like, um, so I had one of these uh, other races come talk to me, but it kind of sounds like a technological, tech, like technological screeching or something, mm -hmm, like a computer. Mm -hmm. That's what it sounds like to me, like mm. computer sounds. Yeah, it's just the coming through the technology, it might sound a little bit like that, but... I know my father, my mother, and everybody, my sisters and brother, and there's a large grouping of our space people watching the show right now, and they're in, they're on spaceships right now, uh, many of them, and they're listening to your story. Your story is very beautiful, you know, and you know you're very, I'm tapping into your energy, you're a very beautiful, pure being of light. I just want you to know that. I'm speaking from an Ashtar Command level right now in consciousness, not from my human consciousness, but from my Ashtar Command beingness of who I am. So I want you to know that. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate it. I'm going to get off here and try not to cry. <laughs> um, no, don't yeah. try not to cry. Allow yourself <laughs> to release. Don't feel, you know, allow yourself to release. It's okay. You're I've very been much loved. Like thirty years, I don't even know how yet. 
Well, you're very yeah, much I loved. Just, so I can get in touch with my emotions. That's like one of my goals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They said you were loved and you were heard. Oh, she's going to make me cry. <laughs> you are. You are loved. And I'm speaking from a to totally Ash Trucker Man consciousness now, not as the talk show host of the show. I'm not channeling anything. I'm talking from my true essence of the command level. Uh, we love you. They love you, our brothers and sisters. And, um, yeah. I love you guys. You touch Thank people's you so hearts. You really do. All right. And you can come on here anytime you want. Anytime okay. you wish to come here, you can. You know? Okay. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Love you too. Oh. Bye. Good All night. Right. Okay, Shakti, you take care of yourself. Okay. And the, and you'll always have our blessings. And the, our command will always be with you to help you whenever you need our help. Uh, we send you our blessings. You tell us whenever you need something, we will be with you always. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Let me see if I can. Okay. Wow. You know, she just like totally, I mean, that was the, energies are so, the energies are so amped up in my room right now. People, you don't understand. There's been such an amping up of energy in this room right now. I can't even tell you how I feel. I mean, I was almost in tears. Almost just about. He said, because you are my son. I'm trying to uh, <laughs> control my emotions. I never felt like this for a long time. Whew. I don't know why I feel like I'm going to cry. It shouldn't be happening. Oh, man. It's okay. Like you would, like you just said, let it out. I've been like this. I've been like that all day today. I was just so happy that the doctor said that I could go to this thing. She made it possible. Oh, good. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, sorry, folks. It's okay. We love you, Commander. You know that. You know, um, oh man, I love my family so much. I love everybody. And uh, I love uh, my parents on the ship. Uh, I look forward to seeing them. And uh, uh, that's all I can say is I really love everybody. I wanna see the planet shift to a place where everyone loves everybody, you know? I, I can't wait. I, I so can't wait for this to happen, you know, because it's going to be so beautiful. It truly is, you know, and then and this is happening now. You know what I mean? This is happening right now. And it's 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 been happening. You know, we just have to learn how to be, you know, good people and start taking care of our planet, start taking care of ourselves, start helping mm. people open up and start spreading the love you know that's the most mm. important thing because mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. think once love comes in you know things will fall into place mm. and that's so important you know there's been so much on this planet where people have forgotten how to love you know um they have totally i'm sorry they've totally kind of forgotten how to love each other they spend they so much time in the in the brain fighting each other over nothing right you know they fight over nothing on this planet and this is true this is true so true 
you know it's a, it's the petty stuff you know but that's that's the way of being a human i guess you know but hopefully now that the shift is going to happen we'll start learning how to be better for ourselves mm. you know and learn how to be better for our families and we'll be more family oriented and you know i just i i just can't I can't wait, you know, it's like, mm. I can't wait to see you guys. I really can't. I just uh, feel like we need, we need to be together. Yeah, and we're going to be. And I want to let people know as I'm getting my emotions a little bit uh, settled now. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm just, uh, I think my tears are tears of joy, not sadness. Um, and uh, I just want people to know that the things that I share, you know, on this planet, it wasn't easy coming to earth. Let me tell you something. When I chose to come here, I don't think it was an easy decision to come here to be in this form, to do this kind of thing that I'm doing. Um, but I know it had to be done, right? I had know it had to be done. And uh, I just want people to, get out of their heads wherever they are on the planet and start learning to love each other. You know, I'm tired of all the fighting on the planet, wars, people getting, you know, jealousies, people, egos. I'm tired of it. You know, I, it's just too much. And we need to start learning to start loving each other. We really do. We have to love each other on this planet. My mission is, well, that's interesting. Uh, something just occurred. I don't know what it is, but I don't know what just happened. I saw that flash of light. Oh, it's on my daughter. Okay, my daughter just, my daughter was using the bathroom. So the flashlight uh -huh. was my daughter <laughs> using the bathroom. I said, what else is going to happen here tonight? Now she, 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 like, she just came out to use the bathroom. So there you go. Hey, down the rabbit hole. Hey, James. So I want everybody as my parents are watching the show and they're listening on the spaceship, they can hear everything that we do here and they observe our planet and what people are doing here. And it's really, really important to shift your consciousness. And I mean, really shift your consciousness. You know, people have to stop, you know, people just have to stop. And when I say stop, people have to start really hugging and loving each other now and it has to happen you know the only one who can make it happen are each of you right each of you have to make it happen and if you do it'll be the most beautiful thing you'll do you know it really will be but you have to believe it you know no one can force you to change you have to be the change no one can force you to change your consciousness you have to change your consciousness i can share everything i can interview tons of people but unless you change your consciousness, nothing, nothing shifts unless you shift your consciousness. Do you understand? And now I'm speaking from an Ashtar Command perspective, not as your talk show host. Do you understand? And if you do understand, be that person. Be that person in human form that will shift your consciousness. You see? The only important thing that we have here in our life on Earth is to love each other that's the most important thing the most important thing we can do is embrace each other in all the cultures of the world we embrace each other can we do that i believe we can when we have our gathering on the 13th it's very very important people don't realize how important the 13th is of april on saturday night coming up this weekend no one has any idea of what we have no idea what we're going to experience, you know, and it's going to be a surprise. My father, Robar, and everyone's listening on the ship, they hear me. We don't know what's going to happen, but we know something's going to happen, and we know something beautiful is going to happen, you know, and we have people that are coming, that have messaged me, emailed me, that are coming, asking for directions. These are beautiful people, and we're going to broadcast it live. On my on TikTok, we're going to broadcast it live in the field in the apple orchard, and we know 
that there are going to be, whether, whether it's going to happen within the next few months, we know that we're going to be going on the ship to do mission work. We're not going on for a joyride. There's a lot of things that are happening off planet that we need to learn. Myself, uh, April's got a little bit of a head start. She's been on the ships 11 times. Uh, Kit Kat, uh, Johnny in New Jersey, and Chesno in Connecticut. The five of us are going to be going together to do mission work. And we might be away from the Earth for a month, might be two months off planet, but what might be considered two hours Earth time. So I know that part of my journey is that I'm meeting my my parents from off planet. My, my brother and my two sisters, you know, my father and my mother, Luna. And I am so overjoyed about that experience. Sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. So... We have to put all the egos out of the way of our consciousness because the human mind has ego. And we have to understand there's something greater that we're here to do. And we're just essentially being a way shower, the five of us. And there's going to be five other people in other countries and five other people in other parts of the planet. This is only the beginning of what's going to happen. You know? Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Cliff. You know? And uh, that's why I'm here on Earth. I'm here to wake up humanity. I'm here without ego, just love. When I do what I do here, I'm here for a reason. I'm glad I came here. I'm reaching people all over the world here. And little by little, we're changing consciousness. And right now, We've had 3,400 people since I've been on here tonight, since 1130 Earth time. 3,400 people have actually viewed the show. So we're reaching a lot of people. And that's the, the goal is to reach as many Earth people as possible. We're reaching many people. And what we do is very serious. I do have a joy and a sense of humor and love coming to Earth with a smile on my face. But right now we're reaching many people because we need to. This is not a game anymore. You know, it's not like a new age game where you can play the game for a while and say, oh, I was doing this for a while and now I can go back and do this. It's a real situation. You know, the things we share, the photos we share that April is able to take pictures of. The reality is we're trying to teach you things that are beyond earth understanding, so to speak. My father and all the people on the ship, when they have April take pictures, it's to be able to show you the existence of things that are not being shown to you on earth, things that you're not seeing on earth. You know, you've been so lied to by your media that you don't know what the truth is anymore. And they're good at doing that. So what we're doing is exposing you to the real galactic truth. You know, we're not channeling anything. We're not doing hocus pocus. We're not uh, got a big clear crystal ball on a cloth table. You know, we're not, we're not reading your future. We're telling you the truth. We're telling you the truth of what's important, what's going to happen to Earth, where we're going. We're going to come back with information when we all go together on that ship. That will be a historic event for the planet. And you're going to know about it here. You're going to know about it on this show because it's real. And I've said it before. I don't care what people think, and I don't. If I did, I wouldn't be doing this. I'm here to do the mission work for the command, which is being a talk show host, interviewing people, hearing your stories. As Shakti shared her beautiful story, which somehow led me and tapped into me to the point where I was like, she's just a beautiful being, you know? 
So understand something. Things from here on in are going to be happening around the planet, off planet, and you'll have experiences that you've never had before on your planet Earth. I'm speaking now from the Astro Command levels. When I say this, I'm not channeling anything. My information is fully awakened and conscious. Like I said, I've been downloaded. I've been downloaded information constantly now. And I'm certainly sure my father and people listening on the ship would concur with what I'm saying to be true. You know? Um, so the way the show was going to go tonight, it hasn't gone the way <laughs> I thought it was going to go whatsoever. I thought I was going to interview a whole lot of people. But after Shakti came on, I knew that my amplification of energy on the show here was really high. As a matter of fact, the energy in this room is so high right now. You can, you, the energy here is so high. You know? And I'm not ignoring any comments there. I'm just right now uh, bringing you information that I'm supposed to speak of. I'm supposed to speak of this information to you. I just want you to know that I love all of you. I always will. Wherever I go in the universe, I will always love you. I will come back with as much love as I gave before I left. I will come back with as much love as I give you now when I come back. And also, I want everyone to love April as well. Commander, they said, being. yes, we love you. That just came across. And I want you to love my friend April too, because she has been a catalyst for connecting me uh, with my father, my mother, and the beautiful things she is showing you. I want everyone to support what she is doing. She is a, a beautiful being of light with the command on this earthly form as I am in earthly form. She needs, she should be supported by everyone. Everyone should love her, support my sister. Uh, this show supports her and uh, support her with unconditional love. And if you're hearing a story for the first time, embrace it. She's giving you good information. And I don't think I've ever said this on here, but definitely support her. You know, she's just a beautiful being of love with the Ashtar Command, you know, everyone support her. And I don't say these things lightly, but you need to support her, really. As I just said it now, because she speaks the truth. She's been there. She's been going on our ships with our parents. She's been there. She doesn't channel anything. She doesn't have a crystal ball. She speaks from the very heart of her soul. She's the very essence of love. And if people can be the same pure love that she is, if you can attest to trying to be the way she is, then you succeeded in being unconditional. And when you become as unconditional as she is, then you're that being of love. My lives are posted. Oh, when do you post the lives? Are you speaking to me? My my lives, I don't, well, I could post my lives. I uh, sometimes post them, but all this is going to be on my YouTube channel, Ashtar Command Spaceship News on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel that's very active. All these shows are put on my YouTube channel. I don't know why you're blocked. You're still here. I don't think you're blocked at all. You're not blocked here. We don't have you blocked here, so I don't know why here. you would think you're blocked. We don't have you, you know, blocked here, so I don't know why you uh, and that's uh, my my voice is now traveling through the universe. Um, and that's uh, my, my voice is now traveling through um, the universe. This wasn't planned. I'm gonna hop down for a second, Commander, and then hop back up. Uh, okay, no problem. <laughs> my voice is now traveling through the universe. What you're hearing is the amplification of my voice. It's traveling throughout the intergalactic universe. Um, and like I said, they're watching the show. 
my composure is coming back where I'm really, uh, I'm just really happy. We're going to bring April right back up here. And let's see what happens here. And uh, it's just coming across when, yeah, when you were talking. Um, there yeah. was like a crystal clear voice that was, I mean, crystal clear voice that was coming across on my end. And they were saying that um, that commander speaks the truth. Um, and then he said, my son. And then he said, um, what was he? Gonna, oh, and then they and then another voice came across and said, you were loved through the universe. But that was a whole nother voice. Mm -hmm. I didn't recognize the other voice, though. But I, mm -hmm. the other one was clearly your father. I know his voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when I told people before, when Shakti came on, it just something, I felt the energy before she came on. And uh, all of a sudden, the energy in this room, like I said, is still very amped up in a very high frequency. Uh, thank you very much, Yaya Spirit. Thank you. My energy is really amped up right now. Um, and uh, I feel, <laughs> I just feel very amped up. I can't explain it in words to anybody. You're glowing. I'm just like, uh, I can't help it, you know. I just feel happy. Believe it or not, I am happy. I'm very happy. And Your, your uh, skin is literally glowing right now. See, that's what happens to me when I start feeling all that love filling up my my heart and I start feeling like that's what happens. I feel like a glow worm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but uh, I will say that the most important thing as I get my thoughts together is that what we are going to do on the 13th in the evening is going to be the most beautiful thing that we can do for the planet. It's not going to be your typical gathering that we've had before as a group. Uh, and it's going to be very much a very important thing. Uh, and I do see people's comments here. Uh, Judy says, I keep seeing your guard behind you breaking the screen. So Judy's saying she sees one of the Ashtar guards that you talked about, April, breaking mm -hmm. through the screen. I don't see anything, but, you know, maybe it's other people that do see that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just uh, there are things that are going to occur. I also believe, and I, I understand this to be true, when I, I get the thing that we're talking about from my father, I'll, I'll say the thing, mm -hmm. uh, it's going directly to earlier in the day, it's going to go directly to my location here. And I believe it's some sort of uh, device that will allow me to have certain... Uh, interactive abilities to interact more uh, easily with my father and my mother on the ship and other things. I don't know much about how this works, but I guess I'm going to learn uh, at some point. Well, um, I, I learned a little something about it, but I will, um, I will talk to you about that when I get yeah, down there. Well, well, yeah. When we get down there, you can mm -hmm. tell me, we'll keep that kind of mm -hmm. private, but uh you know, I'm sure my father will share more before the weekend with you in terms of that, possibly even. But uh, it's just good to be here. Thank you so much for the heart. Um, I think, I hope you're getting uh, a lot of information from us tonight on this show. I think I hope you are enjoying the show uh, tonight. It's different than what I thought it would be. And like I say, I never know what the show's going to be like. It's so spontaneous. Jared, thank you for the roses. Uh, you know, I do have some hats left. Um, and let's see, I do have, oh, I have a Yaya spirit sent me lights, but you know what? I might just do something to finish off the hats with the mustache because I'm in a very joyous mood, which I'm always happy. <laughs> I feel like, uh, what's that guy, um, with the, with the eyebrows and the mustache? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Groucho Marx. I feel yeah. like Rachel, if you do that again with the hat and the mustache, I might just do the Jahar Tahar thing, sort of with the eyebrows going up, you know. <laughs> I could do that. 
<laughs> it's the face that you made. Where, where, where's the hat? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I went from crying with. <clears throat> I don't see the hat showing up. What's going on here? It says I got a hat, but I don't see anything. Hmm, that's really weird. Well, anyway, it must be an invisible hat. <laughs> I have two more hats available. Let's see if it works. Char. That worked. <laughs> I went from crying in joy to starting to be laughing and doing crazy things here. <laughs> yeah, hey, look, folks, I deserve it, you know. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe my parents on the ship are probably. <laughs> you know, I'm telling you, I. I I love everybody. I really do. <laughs> you got to set a new and goal. I have to set a new goal. I, my goal was reached. You know, you folks are beautiful. You know, you're all beautiful. So we have a goal here. I'm supposed to do a goal. I'm going to do another goal. I think we're going to go with the cowboy hat. There's one that is like a, like a disco hat. Let me see if I can change it. The number eight always seems to be the, the number eight. So I always do eight. I love the number eight. So we're going to do that. So we have eight. Deborah, thank you for the donuts. I love donuts virtually. I can't eat it, but I do love donuts. Uh, the hat that you see that I in my thing that I've pinned is a hat. Like if you were at a disco or something, you were out for the night, you were wearing a hat. This would be the hat you'd be wearing. I have eight of them available. Did I pin it? I'm pinning it now. So I just pinned eight hats. It's sort of like a light colored hat, and I'm looking to get eight of those to help in the work I do here on my mission work. So if you feel unconditional love for the commander, please do that. And uh, uh, Saturday, uh, April will be here with a daughter. Um, we're going to uh, get to meet them for the first time, and uh, a few of the other people, there's some people that don't have TikTok, my two people that, are, that I... Uh, that I know that have worked with me for a number of years with the command. They've also been, oh, thank you so much. I love that hat. It looks pretty good on me, actually. Thank you for the roses. We appreciate that, too. And uh, we're just enjoying having everybody here. And, you know, we need, we have a 50, we need to get 50,000 more likes to get to 100,000. With 213 people do the math. Hey, Graham, thank you for that hat. Paranormal, thank you for the roses. I always try to acknowledge people. Thank you, uh, Malette, uh, for the donut. You know, with the roses, the hat, and eating a virtual donut. Uh, thank you, Paranormal, for the definitely for the roses. Mm. We pr appreciate it. Oh, Paranormal sent you roses there. Oh, thank Paris. you, Paranormal. Yeah, thank you for sending her roses. I I I don't know the difference Aww. here, but uh, and please, you know, if you feel like sending uh, you know friends of Prairie some gifts, please do so. Uh, you know, it definitely is a good thing. Uh, you know, so feel free to do so. Thank you, Golden Bear, for the cowboy hat. We appreciate it. You know, uh, this has been a phenomenal show tonight. And I think the beautiful thing is that Shakti really touched a lot of people's hearts. And her story was incredibly important because she went through so much. And just a little time she talked about her story of being abused and all the things that happened to her. Uh, she's just a very beautiful soul, and I'm glad she found the show. It's just uh, synchronicity, you know. She found the show, and our family's on. Oh, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Who said? Who did that to me? <laughs> what, is, what, what was that? Wait a minute. <laughs> Who said me? <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was, oh, Deborah! Thank you, Deborah. <laughs> I want to. Get, you were well. Thank you, you were such a serious note. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! You know we're at fifty-three thousand people, but the beautiful part is, 
Right now, we had over 4,100 people watch the show since 1130. 4,100. So the numbers on here don't relate to the totality of people watching the show. 4,100 people have actually watched the show tonight. So I can track the numbers, which is always good. I just learned how to do that on TikTok. Isn't that kind of cool? So, you know, if you want to be on the show with us and tell a story, uh, we'll stay on till about 1.30 in the morning, which hopefully in the next 30 minutes we can get up to 100,000. You think we can do it, brothers and sisters? You're watching Encounters, the late night spiritual UFO talk show, and we've been very amped up. Uh, as uh, you know, uh, April's parents and my parents are on the ship right now. They're watching the show. They can watch it. I don't know if they use a screen or what they have up there to, to watch the show with, but they're able to watch the show and see all the comments. They definitely so, uh, have monitors. I know that because I've seen They have it. monitors. Yeah. So, and the show is being heard all over the yeah, universe. Right. So there was an, uh, not only my father spoke, but another space being spoke and said, what did they say? We're, uh, we're being... Oh, God, I, don't, I don't even remember. Something <laughs> about the... I think... I think it was the universe or oh, somewhere your, in the universe. Your love to the universe. Oh, love for the universe. Joey says they have a story. Joey, we're going to follow you. And I think this will be the first time we've had jo Joey on here. So let's bring Joey up, uh, April. Let's see if we get Joey up here to tell us his story. It's been a crazy night so far uh, on Encounters. And uh, hey, brother, good to have you with us, Joey. Good evening, Commander. How y'all doing tonight? Nice to see you. We're brother. doing good. We're doing good. Good to have you with us. It's been a really interesting night so far. So tell us a little bit about, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and uh, when you started having things happen. Oh, uh, it's probably been about two, three. Well, I mean, I've always been different. You know what I'm saying? I've always, but anyway, like getting real serious probably the last three, four years. Okay. And so you've had, let me kind of try to gaze into you a little bit. So you've had uh, visual sightings of UFOs, spaceships, contact with space people. Give us some sort of an idea of where, where we're going. No, no, no. What I was wanting to tell you tonight relates directly to the, that girl that was on the show that told her story. I heard Oh, go ahead. And I, and I was on here. But I was on another live tonight. Amy Lynn Freeman, she does stuff like that. There's probably some people in here that seen it before. Mm -hmm. And this girl came on there and she said that anyway, she wound up, she felt alone and she just, she felt like all alone, like completely alone. Yeah. And the last card that Amy Lynn drove her was the star seed card. Mm -hmm. And she says, oh my God, it's your star family. Oh, wow. That's it. And so this woman, Shakti, here, who went through all her experiences earthwise, some of them, of them which we will not go back into, but some, you know, some of the things she went through in her young life, uh, where she is now, she is just a pure being of light, you know? Yeah, that was a beautiful story. Yeah, it was. It absolutely touched my heart, and I think a lot of people's hearts, including yours. Oh, uh, yeah, she was. You know, and she's she's watching right now, so she knows he's home. You know, it's just beautiful that she can feel home here now. She's not alone. Uh, we never want people to feel alone, especially in that case. They should never feel alone. She's definitely right. amongst family here. You know, right. a lot of good people watching my show. All right, Commander. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. That's all I had to say. Hey, Joey, I thank you for saying it. Yes, sir. And I'm sure a lot other people feel the emotional things as you're speaking it a lot of people feel the same way too yes and you half, have all and, and support that's right and half pint has a story so we'll bring her up and we're at 56 hey come on folks you got to tap that screen i know a few people are tapping but if everybody taps that screen we can hit a hundred thousand before 130 okay joey thank you so much for coming up okay and half pint has a story uh yes you can half pint we're going to bring Half Pint up here with us in April. And our Ashtar Command family is watching the show on their monitors uh, on the ship. And hey, welcome back, Half Pint. How are you? All right. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. It's been a really interesting, beautiful night, uh, starting with Shakti and uh, my family's uh, uh, you know, speaking uh, tonight and communicating with us. 
And uh, how are you? And I hear you have some stuff going on, so you want to share it, and we'd be happy to hear it. Oh, my God. You guys won't believe what I saw tonight. I got a picture of it. I got such a huge UFO. It's like I seen inside the UFO. This thing was huge. And you could see them standing in the doorway. Really? It, at my house. <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, now yeah. this is getting interesting. Now, so let I, me... So I was listening to I was listening to you last night talking to somebody and you said for them to go outside and say, I'm ready for you. I want to meet you. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I caught that huge UFO <laughs> tonight. Are you serious? Wow. Yeah. Now tell us, and tell then us on about my the way home. I was catching UFOs flying by me. <laughs> yeah. We, we call those spaceships. Um, so let me ask you a question. The big ship you saw with the people, explain what they looked like. And uh, I, that, that part of it I want to hear. There's a lot to that part that we're not – we don't want you to leave out anything about that experience there. So that one little part with the big ship, the people looking, can you explain were they off the ship or were they looking at you through a window on the ship or what was going on? Um, no. So in this picture, um, you can see them in the doorway. They're standing in the doorway of the ship. And okay. then – if it looks like you could see the inside of it because you can stand you can see a whole bunch of people just hanging out in there in the ship yeah what did they look like uh like us no not like us what did they look like to you um they look like tall beings with high heads high heads Okay. Mm -hmm. Were they both were they both men and women or one, you know, like can you tell us what did you see men and women? Were they men and women tall beings or what would yeah. you say? They it were, was men and okay. women. Men and women, okay. And tall heads. So did they have like uh did they like did the men and women have hair on their heads or or uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Um I couldn't see that clear of it. Mhm. Mm but I know yeah. that they were tall. They were tall. They were tall. So. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, I'm just going to answer this person's question. Uh, no, it's, I answered no. Uh, I'm, someone's asking, were they uh, Zeta? And I'm saying, no, they're not. I'm not getting that they were Zeta. These are tall, very, they were, I'm getting that they were very advanced people, space people. And they yes. come from very, very far away from Earth. No, they're not uh, connected with any of that. Um, you know what I they believe... reminded me of was the Anunnaki. Really? Interesting yes. you said that. Yes. And we had our last guest say that the Anunnaki, she's communicating with them telepathically. So the Anunnaki, in terms of drawings and pictures, are, are, are very tall humans. They are human, but they have, they have human faces. They're just tall. Their necks are taller than our necks. But yes. their facial features are very human. The men and women are very human. So you might have seen an Anunnaki spaceship. That's what I. That's what entered my brain was Anunnaki. As soon as uh, I, Shak as soon as I seen it on the camera. Mm -hmm. Shakti, who was talking about that, says, "True, true, true." What you're just saying, what I just said about that, you actually. I really now I'm tuning into your story. And now I'm image, getting the images of the, the beings, the men and women on that ship, that large ship. You actually encountered an Anunnaki spaceship. It you was encountered so an cool. Anunnaki spaceship. It was so cool, man. I couldn't believe it. I was just like, yeah, they're here. <laughs> I wonder if my, uh, my father, they're listening on the ship, if they want to say anything about that Anunnaki spaceship. Uh, I know that if they do, they would tell April. Because she's right there. And they actually she can hear did them. say something. They said, yes, Anunnaki. Uh, oh, see? they did? Yes, yes. they did. The, I was yes. waiting for you to finish so I could tell you what they said. Yes. So were they so, coming uh, to visit me? <laughs> uh, I'll yes. wait for the answer. Yes. Yes. Oh, how cool. That is so cool. I'm just like so jazzed because about you asked. that. Did you ask? That's what they just said because you asked. Yeah, I asked him today, actually. Wow. Yeah, that's what they said because you asked. Yeah. 
You see? Yeah, I said, I'm ready to meet you. Please come down here. I'm ready to meet you. I am not afraid of you. And, you know, it doesn't matter what you look like. I just want to meet you. I no, know you're around me. I no just want to see you. <laughs> no fear is what they just no said. No fear. Yeah. yeah, see, this it is... Was a, so this cool, is these, guys. Yeah, and um, she was, you know, you were ready. And actually, I believe now that you've made contact with them, you can make contact with them on a regular basis. Now you've now you are a um, what's the word I'm getting? You now have facilitated communications without fear with the Anunnaki. Uh, I believe I'm not going to go too far ahead of myself, but I do believe that you will be able to go on their ship. That you'll be invited to go on the ship to meet with them. I'm um, getting that you will be able to communicate with them, not just view their ship. This was just a first test uh, between them and you to see how the relationship would work. But I think... Uh, they just said yes, family. Yes. You're going to be... I don't know exactly when, but I have the information for you. I'm fully awakened, conscious. You're going to be... Um, I would say soon. I don't know what that means. You're going to be visited. They will... They can come out of their ship and knock on your front door. They will uh, take you on the ship with them, and uh, you will be taken aboard the ship, and they will bring information to you is what I'm getting. I think that is correct. I think that, that is, is so correct. Cool. Yes. So check this out. So I also got this other picture up, right? My husband was on the deck with me outside, but he looked transparent, and there was somebody standing behind him. Um. The being behind him was tall, correct? Um, Translucent or tall? Guy. Yeah. Yes. He can, this yeah. one kind of looked like he was shorter, though. Shorter, than, okay. Yeah. But it was really weird because he was transparent. I was like, oh, he's going to disappear again. <laughs> mm -hmm. you're, he's you're, done that um, to me. you're having intergalactic... Uh, uh, you're having communications occur on your property that is a galactic opening. You've actually, um, there's a protection around your property now. I'm getting Thank information God. for you. <laughs> you are going to be soon going on their spaceship, the mothership. Uh, I want you to know this now. And allow yourself and your husband to be, I think you're both ready. You have no fear. Am I correct? No. No fear whatsoever. You have no we, fear. we are never, ready never to had. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to. Yeah. Just like just like with us with our family, like April, uh, with our family on the Ashtar ships, you're going to uh, go on the Anunnaki ship at some point very soon. I don't know exactly when that timing is, um, but they will know to, they now know where you are. You're going to be having gradual contact. They will actually come physically and um, you'll not be afraid of them. They come from pure love, totally pure love. They're going to uh, introduce you to the Anunnaki people on the ship, and you'll be taken to get information that you will share in your area that will assist people on the planet Earth. This is what I'm getting for you. Do you understand? That'll be so cool. Yeah, that'll be so cool. <laughs> so um, when I got home tonight, right, because I Thank take you, pictures every night outside mm -hmm. and um i mean there was all sorts of of beings i mean on one side of my trailer i have golden they're golden like i don't know if they're fairies i don't know what they are but they're little golden things in the air those are little light beings but those are fair they're from the fairy realm and then and then i took a picture and there was something standing right in front of me and it looked like a white cap, you know, like mm. somebody was wearing a, a white knitted cap right in front mm. of me. Like I snapped the picture and the head's right there on the picture. Really? It sounds like an elf. Yeah. The newer the newer generation of elves, they, they are identified by their hats, but they don't um, see that they don't like to wear the traditional pointed hats if they don't have to. They'll wear baseball caps or... Um, like knitted hats and like yeah, it was a knitted, it was a knitted cap. 
Thank you, Jared, for all those uh, gifts. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, you and are. Then, uh, and then I seen one right on my deck. It was. It only stood like maybe a foot high. That was cool mm -hmm. too. <laughs> They're very, very you, attracted to you. They really yeah. are. You have a very light soul, and they know that about yes. you. That's why they're coming to you. Your smile. Your you have a very when I, we look at you on the show here, you have a very pure energy of light. You're totally filled with light and love in your heart. Commander, you're a no, beautiful thank you. being. <laughs> yes, you are. You're very beautiful. You know. Thank you. You are. And That's you cool. are going to when you go with the Anunnaki you're going to have the real experience people there's so many people that talk about the anunnaki you know and and so many different agendas of them but the truth is the anunnaki are part of the ashtar command they are part of the galactic groupings of light that work in christ consciousness they are and and they're here with many other uh, civilizations of light to assist the planet so because you actually spoke to them my information for you is that your mission is going to be uh, they're going to guide you in the mission on Earth, and you're going to bring information back when they take you on the ship. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Mm. And I'm right now, waiting, tonight, I'm, so, yeah. so check it out. So remember I told you about that big orange uh, orb that was in on my street out here, and it yes. was huge, and it made me feel divine? Yes, I think yes. That was my first contact with them. Yes. They were, let me explain something. At that time, they were testing to see if you were ready for contact. They right. wanted to do it gently. So that was one of their smaller energetic uh, craft, so to speak. Uh, but they knew you were ready, and they knew that you're ready now. They brought the big ship so you can see the people on the spaceship, the Yananaki spaceship. Um, can you describe what the ship looked like? Oh my God, man, this thing was huge. So where they were standing at in the doorway, so there's like, I don't know, there must have been four windows at the top, and then there was another like dome at the top of that. Yes. Does that sound yes, familiar? Their, yes, their control center on the ship, the ship's control center is within and or near the dome center of the spaceship. It's a very big ship. It's a massive ship. If you were inside it, um, it would be like being in a shopping mall. It's so big. Oh, yeah, it's this a, thing it, was huge. Yes. On the ship, um, I'm getting, number-wise, there were probably hundreds, if not thousands, on the ship. It's a big, big ship, and people say, well, how could there be thousands on the ship? Understand, beyond human comprehension, that the ships off-planet, these the mother ships, the big ships are very, they, the space is very massive inside the craft, unlike what you see outside the ship. And when you think it's big outside the spaceship of the, this particular Anunnaki craft is that there are sleeping quarters on the ship. Uh, they travel from beyond the earth and they came from to you. Uh, they can travel in uh, traveling systems that go between time and space. So they're able to traverse the universe in like two seconds. Wow. Do you understand? That is so amazing. Yes. I'm just so jazzed. I'm like, I'm like really excited. <laughs> yes. That might sound weird, but I am. I'm just really excited. <laughs> yes. You are going to be, I'm getting, I'm trying to get more definitive information about when you're going on the ship with them. I would say within the next two months. The number two comes That's up in cool. my head right now. Within two months, you're going to be going on the spaceship. And you'll know when that time is going to be. They will knock on your door, so to speak. Uh, what is that? Oh, it's my phone. Somebody's okay. texting me. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, that's a, those are texting things. They go over the thing here. I know that. But um, you're going to be in the next two months. Uh, you and your husband, uh, I believe, both will go together on the ship. And you'll yeah, come so back together. So check this out. So me and Ray were um, meant to be together. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think we've been together in past lives, me and Ray. Mm -hmm. Like, seriously, like we were looking for each other when we were kids. That kind well, you of know. stuff, you know? Well, you don't have to think you were together. You already know you were together, correct? Yeah. You don't even have to think about it. 
Don't need that word no, just for I, that I out of the window. No, I already know that we're together. I already sure. know that we're together in past lives. So yes, that's cool too. That is very beautiful. So I'm op I'm operating right now in a different consciousness. That's why I'm able to see things differently. I'm be able to tell you things. I'm not just being a talk show host tonight. I'm actually my Ashtar Command level of consciousness right now. And so I'm able to present information to you that normally I wouldn't do if I was just strictly interviewing people. Uh, I'm giving you information now because it's time for you to understand this information that I am giving you. You are going to have some beautiful experiences. My understanding is when you go on their ship, they're going to take you off planet um, to specifically where their location is beyond Earth. When you, uh, you're going to be guided with information. They'll be giving you certain things that will be used for educational purposes. And uh, at some point, um, they will, with the galactic groupings of the command in the near future, uh, many of their ships will be here. They have many, many ships, the Anunnaki, as well as the other star civilizations, and they're all working together. There are other people on this planet that don't know this yet. There are people on Earth that are going to be contacted soon by individual star groupings of star beings, and they'll be contacted, and not necessarily people that are watching this show. There might be some here, but all over the planet there are people that are awakened, and they will be contacted in certain groups within the next mm, couple of months. Well, that'll be months. cool. Yes. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm just I'm just sharing this information now because my consciousness has shifted, and I want people to understand things that they don't understand. Get ready for some very important things to occur on Earth, or let's say on Earth and above Earth in our uh, galactic atmosphere soon. You know what? I think I've been waiting since I was a kid for this. I just think I was too scared to say, yes, mm -hmm. I'm ready. And when I did that, they showed up, and that's cool. That's really amazing. Someone's asking you, Half Pint, are you from Maine? Uh, no, I'm from Pennsylvania. She's in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Someone's saying, Commander, I'd like to discuss a dream I had during the eclipse, perhaps tomorrow night. Yes, yeah, Sonic, tomorrow night we'll definitely bring you up, brother, to do that. And... Uh, so Iga Diga says, so it is normal to, to, multi, to multiple different kinds of ships, a uh, wide range of them. Yes, Iga, there are many different ships from many different civilizations. So I think your question is, can you see different ships of different kinds? Yes. Uh, good evening, California. Welcome to our show. You're watching Encounters, my friend April in Vermont. And myself work with the Ashtar Command directly. Uh, we have Hampite who just had an encounter with an Anunnaki spaceship, a mothership, physically, and uh, saw the people on the ship that are tall. She said they had uh, they're human. They had tall necks and uh, heads. Uh, they uh, were on their ship looking at her, and she had asked to be contacted, and she was ready. And uh, just to recap, can you tell us what time that happened? Uh, the contact with the Anunnaki ship? Um, probably 9.30. 9.30 tonight, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, it'd be 9.30 tomorrow's Wednesday, so 9.30 Tuesday evening she saw this. So, yeah, depending on what your time zone is. So this is what's happening, folks. This you have to understand. There's going to be increased activity by our... Uh, galactic family, star family, so to speak, many of you are going to start having experiences that you've never had before in your life. You have to just be centered, clear, and ready. Centered, clear, and ready. Speaking of which, we have 78.3 thousand. We need to get up to 100,000, and we're not even there yet. We should be able to do that. And, and uh, yeah, I guys, don't, don't be scared right. of nothing, because if you're scared, they won't come. You just Got to get rid of that fear. And not only that, you have to, you, and not only get rid of the fear, you have to make sure that you're connecting with 
the star people, the light people, the beings of Christ consciousness with the Anunnaki, they operate in Christ consciousness. Uh, you don't want to just contact anybody. When you get rid of the fear, you have to be very, very uh, direct about who you're contacting. Uh, make sure that you say, I want to have contact with Christed beings of light. And if you put it in that word, you're shooting out in frequency in the universe. I want to get connected to my star family, the Christed beings of light in my star family. Use those words. Focus on that energy. And what you get out, what you send out, you'll receive back. So be very, very sure of what you're doing. Make sure you're centered like uh, Half Pint is. And do exactly as she has done. Look what happened with her. 9.30 last night on Tuesday evening uh, where she is. She had contact with the Anunnaki in Pennsylvania with a large mothership. And you live out in the country, correct? Oh, yeah. I'm like in the Appalachian Mountains. She's in the Appalachian Mountains. Well, what better place for them to contact her in the Appalachian Mountains where there's no city or anything that's a safe place for this mothership to come? And that's exactly what's happening. I think um, that the Anunnaki are going to set up a space base in the mountains where you are. I think it's going to be similar to what's happening with my friend April in Vermont, and she's in uh, near the Canadian border. Uh, I think they're going to now set up a base there. You're a contact for them. I think that will be a safe base in the mountains. And uh, uh, do you understand that that's, what gonna, that's going to happen? Do you feel that? Yeah, I do. So, so, it's, so I'm telling you, it will be happening, yes. So I go out every morning and every afternoon and every night and say, I want love and light beings. There can't be any evil here. And in God's name, only love and light. That's all I want. So I do that every day, three times a day. I walk around my property saying Oh, it. good. <laughs> you know what? And that's a beautiful thing, Half Pipe, because that is invoking the very beauty, the essence of your power within light, the essence of the purity of your love, the essence of who you are. And because you say it just like a mantra, you say it so easily, um, they hear that. Uh, you know, the Anunnaki hear that. The star people hear that. They know that it's a safe place to be with you and that it's also going to be you're, you're now a base on earth for the star people. Not just the Anunnaki. There'll be other star people that will be visiting you and they will be interacting with you on a physical level pretty soon. Way sooner than you even think. Well, they already started. You said you saw them coming, walking on out of the ship because yeah. they know that they can contact you now. And they're going to be a very beautiful experience for you. Uh, Tony, uh, I call them star people because they are people. They're people like you and me. They're people. They're star people meaning they come from other planets they're star people on earth people on earth have misunderstood the star people because they never heard the terminology star people i'm using it a lot lately specifically for star people so if we went to another planet we would we would be considered star people from earth going to let's say planet x y or z we would be star people coming out of our spaceship they are star people they come from other planetary systems of light. Therefore, we call it star people. Does that answer your question? About the star people? What's it say, Half Pint? Are you Westmoreland or Washington County? I'm in Clearfield County in Pennsylvania. Yeah. She's up in the woods. Uh, yeah. Zal... <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so this one person that ne this one person needs to get protected in the Christ consciousness. I think it's Zaldris. Zaldris, here's what I suggest you do. You know, I guess you might have had uh, those beings, what you call the Zeta, are being taken off the planet. Uh, so it's not the Zeta. Uh, if you've had experiences, I don't know if you had any. It sounds like you've had some negative experiences. I would recommend you meditate. You meditate in Christ meditation. And you say you're a Christ of being of light. If you've had those experiences, I'm sorry you have. But you can change that. But you have to be the one to change the experience. Okay? So you need to understand that uh, those beings are being taken off the planet. And they will stop. If, they're st if you're having contact currently with them, it can be stopped. You're the only one who can really stop it. You have to just say, 
I'm a Christ of being of light. You cannot come into my existence, and you will be able to stop it. Uh, Zaya, Yaya says, I always say hello in the AM. Like I, I love you and good night. Hey, Yaya, let's see here. Thank you, Half Pint. I'm reading people's comments here a little bit. Wow, seriously, in qualifying round, I'm in 13th place. Yes, I have. Let's see. Can you describe the Anunnaki? I think you're talking about Venus the Anunnaki. I think that's what you mean, not E-N-N-I-K-I. Anunnaki, I think. So, let's see. Are you Christians? No. Uh, are you, who, who's that question for, Katie? Um, Christ consciousness has nothing to do with Christians. It has to do with operating in Christ consciousness. So, if you are learning to have contact with uh, people from other planets, one of the things that's so important for people to do is operate in Christ consciousness. It's a galactic consciousness. That's the most important thing everybody can do. If you don't know how to do it, ask us. Uh, you can ask April, me, and even Half Pint. She's operating in cosmic Christ consciousness. She has no fear. Her heart is pure. She connects with the space people because she works in a Christ consciousness, which has nothing to do with being Christian or Jewish or whatever. Um, yeah, so I'm just reading, I'm looking at comments. But for people watching the show, I'm glad you're here. For all the new people that are finding our show, just realize you're supposed to be here. You came here for a reason. You're going to be addicted to this show. And when I say you're going to be addicted, I mean it because it's a good show to be addicted to. There's other things you can be addicted to that are not so good. But if you're addicted to my show, you're in a good place. I can guarantee it. I'm I hoping got to addicted. Get the whole... <laughs> half, half Pint got addicted. My goal is to addict everybody on the planet to this show. I won't stop until I get everybody addicted to encounters. We'll do it. Half Pint is it a testament to that? She just said I got addicted. You see? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it's it's uh, we're about 83,000. We get to 100,000. We're going to end the show for tonight at 100,000 people. And I can see the energy that are really amped up. You can sub, so hear my voice amplification. That's because I'm very amped up uh, very much. There's a lot of amplification in the room here. I mean, energy-wise, speaking in Christ consciousness, we have now had 5,500 people since 11.30 of this evening watch the show. 55,000, no, not 55,000, wow, 5,500 people have actually viewed the show tonight. Ashley says, I was addicted after the first live. That's very good, see? So if you get addicted to my show, it's a good addiction. You don't have to go to rehab, I guarantee it. <laughs> You know, you know what, Commander? You got so much energy coming towards me that I probably won't even sleep tonight. That's yeah, I know. how much my energy I got right now. <laughs> yeah, my energy is really amped up. My father's watching on the ship. Uh, my Commander, I hopped down because my phone was going nuts. <laughs> well, my no, my phone's going a little bit nuts too. It, it my, I can hear my voice. It, anyone can hear my voice. Their amplification is my voice. My, my show is being broadcast throughout the multiverse. Uh, it's really amazing to be on TikTok and realize not only am I talking to people here on Earth, but I'm seeing people are seeing me on monitors on other ships off planet. They're watching the show. We're talking about probably millions of star people watching my show right now. And TikTok can't even account for that. <laughs> the TikTok that can't even account so for the. Cool. The millions of people in space that are watching my show right now, brothers and sisters. <laughs> Christ, okay, and uh, Mur F, Mr. 72. Christ consciousness, the Holy Spirit are not the same. Right. Christ consciousness and Holy Spirit aren't the same. But uh, so I appreciate you saying that, Mur. I think F, Mr. Welcome to the show. And the Holy Spirit is very beautiful too, you know. But we operate in that Christ. I can almost hear another voice speaking. Uh, my amplification is so strong right now. It is really, really strong. Uh, yeah, I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I think uh, my father and everybody are sending some energies down into the room here um, that are really, really strong energies coming from the ship. I'm being really amplified up here. I'm going to have an interesting night sleeping tonight. Uh, I got a feeling for some reason. Um, but I must say that I love all of you. It's been really quite a night tonight. Uh, Venus, thank you. My consciousness is going so quick right now, I can't even express how fast my consciousness is rapidly going. I don't mean to go so fast in my words, but I am totally, like, so amped up. My consciousness is going um, a nanosecond, like a nanosecond. Well, you know, thank I you better... for having me on tonight. Oh, I'm glad you came on here. You're a blessing. I want to also thank Shakti for coming on earlier, uh, Money for coming on uh, and sharing uh, what he felt. Uh, we really, really love everybody out there. And uh, Half Pine, keep us up to date about the Anunnaki because you're going to have more visitations coming up. Not I only will, that, and, and and it won't be weeks from now. It's going to be not, it's going to be mostly during the night. They're going to come with their ship at night, and they will eventually come off the ship, and uh, they're going to interact with you. That's cool. Well, I'm sending yeah. love, sending light and love to everybody. Everybody needs that light and love. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you're a great example. Thank you for coming on here. You know you're welcome on the show anytime. Thank you, Commander. I really I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. By the way, by yes. the way, I'm now talking to Rod. Yeah. And I go on his show too. Oh good. So good. I'm getting used to this, kind of. <laughs> oh, good, good. You know, you're becoming a uh, a celebrity, so to speak. <laughs> no, no. Uh, you, you know, I'm kidding. I'm kidding with you about that. But no, Rod's, a good, Rod's a really good brother. Very beautiful person. So, yeah. Everyone, say, uh, say thank you to Half Pint. Thank you for coming on here and sharing that really important story. It really is. Beautiful. I just thought it was really amazing. And it was very important that you came on here to share that. It really was. So thank you. I want to, you know, next uh, few weeks, if anything amazing happens, just tell me, Commander, I want to come on here. I got some new information, and I'll put you right on the show. Okay, like I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep you informed. Okay, Half Pint. You take care. Many blessings to yeah. you. That was Half Pint. Man, we've had such a great show tonight. Uh, my father and my mother and everybody on the ship are watching. And, and not only them, they have monitoring screens on the spaceship. And people throughout uh, all the other ships are watching this show here. So uh, that doesn't relate to how many people are viewing the show on TikTok. Because you're talking upon thousands upon thousands of space people watching the show throughout the universe. Within the Ashtar Command ranks. It's pretty amazing, folks, what's happening here. You know, and just amazing. Uh, Lilac, are they with the angels? Of course, the angels work with the Ashtar Command as well. The angelic realm works with the Ashtar Command. The angelic planetary systems, uh, angels have families as well. That would be absolutely correct. And we're at 88.3. It's almost 2 in the morning. I don't think I'm going to make it to 100,000. But if everybody would tap really quickly, 241 people tap, could you do that? Could 235 people tap? So I can go and call it a night on the show here. You know, there's only one of me. So the one of me needs to be able to get rest and go off planet and then come back refreshed so I can do another show. You see, you want me to be refreshed, don't you? Hey, one Toyota, thank you. Uh, Fonzie says, I'm calling the angels down. Oh, beautiful. So we're almost at 191.2. And again, I want to thank all the people for their gifts. Dustin says, no, I got to go to work sleeping. Ah. And I want to thank all the new people. From, this show is going to be on my YouTube channel. User 338 says, I was taken in a spaceship once. Interesting. And we're at almost 100,000, 
94. We're getting there. You know, 239 people, we can definitely get to 100,000 very quickly. It's been quite a night here. The guy was beautiful and was tall with blonde hair. Interesting, user 338. Oh, user 338. Uh, if you can come on the show tomorrow night, user 338 will be on at around 11 o'clock. I'd like to hear your story about the space person you said was beautiful, it was tall with blonde hair. User 338, I'm following you. Follow me back. I want to hear about your spaceship story tomorrow night if you're willing to come on. Okay? Good. You agreed? Follow me. Follow, I'm following you. We're going to hear user 338 story tomorrow night. I also saw an abduction. Okay. That so we want to hear both the story about the space person and also your abduction story as well. Um, Laura JM2 says I'm recovering from cancer in my neck. Had neck dissection two weeks ago. Can I be healed by you? Um, I'll have to meditate on that. I'm not sure that I can heal you. Um, I've done healing things on my show once in a while. Um, oh, we did hit 100,000. Okay, good. I'll have to think about that one, Laura, or at least help you in some way understand how you can heal yourself. But, um, yeah. But now I'm starting to fade out a little bit. Um, so... And some people, uh, apricot seed, someone said, is a good four, five, four, six. Uh, uh, Laura, we appreciate you being here. And we appreciate everybody here. So we're going to call tonight. Thanks, everybody, for watching Encounters. We'll be on tomorrow night with another show of Encounters. And we never know what's going to happen. But we're going to have uh, some guest interviews. Uh, a 338 is going to be our first guest tomorrow night. So we're over. If you want to be a guest on the show and you've got 200 plus followers or 100,000 or 100 uh, or 1,000 followers, I should say, now my mind's going on me, uh, you can come on uh, our show and talk about your stories. All right, everybody. I love you all. Everybody have a good night. This has been Encounters, the late night spiritual number one UFO talk show on social media. Take care. Love and light to everybody. Please love each other unconditionally and have a good day on Wednesday.